This is a small video of my work table. I'm afraid it is very, very untidy and muddly, but I absolutely love it. And Chips, my dog, is barking in the background. I think a deer must have come into the garden. And the boiler is purring away below. It's a very comforting sound. And I know in the winter that when that boiler comes on, I'm gorgeously warm. The title of my project is The Collector's Room. I have collected things since a small child and it has become part of my practice as well as a way of drawing my surroundings. Many of these objects have been found when walking and so walking has become an important part of who I am. I am very interested in the way people engage with art and in this project I would like to slow the audience down and make them look closely and even more closely and engage with the ideas that are projected in this work. For the first time ever I am curating the collection and arranging the objects in groups together with found text and found images. Materiality plays a large part in my work and I make ordinary things and display them beside found objects. It focuses on the moments when materials become willful participants within that artistic process. Well, it all started with a bonfire. I found some old pictures in my studio and I realised that I really didn't like working that way anymore. And so I started a small fire and burnt quite a few canvases. It wasn't easy and during, the, during that day I felt quite bad about doing it. But the day after I felt quite good about it and it sort of relates back to a, a self-portrait project we did um, earlier on in the year and this um, had a psychogeographical element to it as well and that really means that you are you put yourself into situations and environments where you might feel slightly uncomfortable so I took this idea of feeling uncomfortable and how I could sort of examine my own self, if you like, um, by doing that. Um, so I decided, having done the bonfire, that I would put myself into other situations where I feel, felt quite slightly uncomfortable or slightly different to how I go along normally. Um, and I've been, I've tried various different things. I've been singing under bridges. I've been wandering around, taking photos and babbling into my phone recorder. Um, I've been walking in circles with wet feet. Uh, I've done all sorts of strange things and uh, come back to the conclusion that for me it's all about um, observing how I'm coping with change at the moment. I was using, I used a blue plastic bottle that I bought in the plane when we were going on our trip to Madrid. And what I had in my mind was the final project that we had begin, been given, which was roughly speaking around self-portrait. And as, as the plane descends, uh, the bottle, when you've drunk most of the water, the bottle, uh, the pressure forces it to change its shape. So I picked the bottle up to leave and I looked at the shape and I thought it was an interesting shape and then it occurred to me that it's also a kind of metaphor for uh, the way that the forces in our environment act upon us and in a sense make us change our shape, whether that's a physical shape or psychic or emotional or 
systemic or whatever shape. We're affected by what's going on around us. So the metaphor kind of gained strength for me and then I started uh, learning how to make moulds and cast using um, initially wax and porcelain slip, um, resin and uh, make, making a mould I found incredibly much more difficult than I imagined. I had to have three goes at it before I got the separation line remotely right because the shape of the bottle is rather complex. It had lots of overhangs and that in itself was a lesson in humility and patience. <laughs> Uh, a use of quite a lot of materials and then I just got involved with um, making different forms of the bottle using now wrapping stuff around it or making um, covering it with papier thin layers of papier mache and then... yeah so my project is um, I suppose in many ways it feels like a culmination of several things I've been exploring over the past year, it was, um, which is because it's combines 2D, 3D and moving image, um, which is quite unlike my previous work that I did before. Um, so it's quite interesting and I think it's um, particularly because I'm quite interested in this, I suppose exploring the idea of what, what an image is and what an image can be um, by using, you know, things that are overlapping with other things. Um, so yeah, that's something which I was quite interested in exploring in this project. Um, and in terms of sort of the themes, I suppose, that I was, I was interested in exploring, um, is more this idea of, um, I suppose, bringing something private into the public sphere, as it were. So, uh, say, like a body, which is usually something which is sometimes quite self-contained, quite private, but using scale to make that something which becomes um, a very public thing, very cons something very conspicuous. Um, and I think scale has been sort of also a key element of this project because I've been working initially from very small, well, quite small models, um, sculpting sort of probably about 15 centimetre high like that. <laughs> um, models and and then working up to a very large quite a large scale from, from those models um, so that's yeah that's been also an interesting um, thing to explore sort of the difference in effect and um, also that sense of being further removed from the original source so I've been drawing um, drawing from something that I've sculpted um, which is also something new for me. My work for this show is based on the feeling of going from a state of restriction into a state of um, freedom. My mother died three months ago and before that I had been looking after her for over ten years. Um, but I do know that um, it's a, quite a universal thing to be in a restricted um, state um, and I wanted to somehow describe um, the, the change, the change that occurs. My work is uh, process driven, really love to, to be in, in a sort of between state of um, control and out of control. Um, order and chaos. And I suppose you could almost say I'm doing that within this um, performance, with this restriction and then freedom. Sort of two opposites coming together and what happens in that in-between stage. Um, I'm doing a performance because I feel that it is the best way to describe um, exactly this change that occurs. Um, I. Uh, I was so tied to my mother's needs for, for so many years. Um, it, it does feel a, a very bittersweet feeling um, to, to not be looking after her. And um, 
and 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 yet we we all go through these kind of stages in our life and um, it is a part of life um, my my practice uh, is very much process driven um, uh, similar to this performance piece it's uh, it, there's a there's an incredible process that goes on in in order to to um, put the work together. I'm doing something about what it's like to die, death from the point of view of the, of the dying person. A source of information to do with this is, is, is uh, accounts of near-death experiences and analysis of those, those accounts, which is what I've been using. Um, and, uh, and I'm interested in the, in the subjective experience of, of the dying. The near-death experiences suggest that people go through stages feeling harmony, feeling joy, feeling at peace, a kind of seeing the light and then becoming the light. That's, that's been five stages and I'm trying to kind of represent that process, yeah. becoming the light. I'm, 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 I'm producing a metaphor, as I say, for this, uh, this process. Um, and I'm, I'm using the, the platonic solids from uh, Greek uh, uh, geometry. Uh, the platonic solids are the cube, the icosahedron, the octahedron, the tetrahedron, and the dodecahedron. Um, and I'm using their association in Greek thought with the elements that the, the, the Greeks identified as earth, water, air, fire and quintessence and I'm putting those alongside these five stages. So my work is about identity and I guess in retrospect looking back this year most of my work has been kind of unpicking parts of my identity and who I'm trying to figure out who I am. Um, I've been in the UK for two years now, um, but I've decided to go back. So that, that's where I'm at in my work now, and I think instead of thinking of a concept that's maybe, you know, that I like or it, it's a bit um, loose, or I'm, I want to try and look at something that I'm experiencing now. So what what is my reality now? How could I create something or work with something which I'm experiencing now. Um, earlier this year we, I wrote a manifesto which kind of solidified where I'm at as an artist and it really helped me go, yes, um, using emotion and layers of meaning is really what I like to do as an mm -hmm. artist and that's okay. Uh, so this work is really looking at myself now and I really like who I am now but can I take that back to Australia in a place where I've been before. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the work is an installation, it's um, taking pieces of houses, it's taking pieces of furniture, um, scrap materials, um, and that's kind of stemmed from living in 12 different houses, which I, in my process I've kind of depicted and drawn, um, and living in all these different houses has made me realise how much I like being in a space and making that work. Um, so in this work you'll see um, mirrors, you'll see glass, you'll see windows, you'll see kind of me trying to explore that inner versus outer and yes I can be in a space but also feel like I'm outside and things like that so um, that's what I'm trying to do. I like um, working in different media and usually a project begins with an idea and then the choice of medium comes a bit later uh, but for this project I decided I would start with the medium and I chose photography and having chosen it I needed a subject and so I looked around and chose 
road markings. And I chose them because they are one of the most, or one of the least uh, aesthetic things you can think of, probably. We don't certainly think of them as beautiful and we don't really notice them very much. And they still kind of uh, control what we can do and how we behave in some ways. So I gathered a lot of photographs and I started working on them in Photoshop. Um, I'm not a painter, so um, the nearest thing I get probably to painting is using Photoshop. And the objects themselves, the road markings, are literally paintings. When you think of it, they are a paint applied to a surface. So um, what I'm doing is reworking those paintings. And I began by uh, making them black and white, adjusting the tonal range so they were a bit more dramatic, have a bit more impact, and then worked on top of them um, with Photoshop in the colours. So what I've eventually done is to take the Rood Painter's original work and rework it, but my reworking is not on the road, it's just on the image. 